Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Power of Your Mind podcast. You are listening to episode 254. We're going to talk about compassion today, the missing ingredient to manifestation. I'm Jim Kellner, comedy hypnotist, and I am joining again, Victoria Gallagher. Now, in case you're new to this show, Victoria is the number one bestseller, a bestselling author of The Practical Law of Attraction, also the ultimate weight loss power, how to manifest your soulmate, and the founder of hiptalk.com and HypnoCloud Apps, the premier online destination for hypnosis recordings with over 500 recordings to choose from. HypnoCloud provides solution solutions for people from all walks of life. She has guided meditations on there, man, um, affirmations, hypnotherapy to help with the law of attraction, manifestation, business success, stress, anxiety, sleep issues, and more. So be sure to download it today from the app stores. The goal of this show is to inspire you to dream big, to live your best life as every week we discuss how to use manifesting, affirmations, meditation, and hypnosis to help people to create the life of their dreams. So if you're ready to start manifesting your best life, join us and let us help you to tap into the power of your mind. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Jim. How are you? Doing fantastic. How are you? Good. Good. I was just listening to you talk all about this uh, HypnoCloud app. Um, how you can, you know, download the 500, you know, or have access to all these 500 hypnosis sessions, but, you know, I'm looking at when this episode is going to air and this episode is going to air April 27th. Now hmm. believe has got to be out by now. It's, it's in, it's, it's on my in, phone right now, it's, right it's now. It's there. It's out there, As you, you know, speak. like, cause we're, we're in the future right now. We're manifesting the future and I'm manifesting that you can go get this believe hypnosis app right now. Yeah. Right now. So you do can it. go get it right so do now. It. Don't so, delay. So, so yeah, if you haven't gotten it, um, and I don't even know what the promo code is going to be, but there's going to be a promo code which if you go to the show notes, we'll go back and we're going to put this promo code where we'll go back and we'll redo this and you'll be able to, um, you know, go right to my website and, 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 uh, get yourself a subscription, um, an annual subscription. I don't know exactly what the deal is going to be, but it's going to, there's going to be a deal <laughs> for those of Fabulous you deal. who are, are tuning in. But I don't want to say right now because, you know, things are going to change between now right. and then. Yep. And, but I, I, I can absolutely, like, I believe, believe. <laughs> I, too believe. I believe this app is out right now as you're listening. This moment. This yes. moment. This moment. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so there Can't you go. Wait. There yeah, you go. and I've already Believe. been listening to the I've been listening to the recordings on the app, and it's fantastic. So yeah. there you go, because it's, yeah. it's been out for a couple of weeks now, actually. As this, oh airs. my god! Yeah. So just so you guys know, the lead up to this app coming out, um, you know, I had made a goal because I've been talking about 500, 500, 500 for a long time now, and it's like it's time to get to the next level, and so by now. By now, that's always a, a good, you know, by now. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. ah, ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> LP stuff there. I like it. By now, there, there is at least a thousand. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My I've been. Well, you, well, you just knocked I've out been, like 10 the other day, didn't you? What was that? I like did. 10 in one day? Wow. I did. That's what being being but what doing this for this long has enabled me to do now that being said the ones that i've been working on because i have so many that are in the 25 to 35 minute range i've yeah. been working on a lot that are in the eight minute to nice. um even you know up to 20 minutes but you know mm -hmm. in that range because i'm really filling that gap uh, for people who, you know, they, they still want to do something for their mindset in the morning, but maybe you don't have a half an hour. And 
Yeah. Exactly. So like just you know, a few minutes, give me a few minutes. Yeah. I've got some really powerful seven, eight, nine minute meditations, 15s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're going to really, really love this app. Good deal. Good deal. So Victoria, today we are, um, the subject of today is we're talking about compassion, compassion, yes. the missing ingredient yes. to manifestation. So can you tell us why is compassion important for manifestation? Well, um, first of all, compassion, it raises your vibration. Um, it helps you to feel good about yourself when you feel, oh, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't it? I mean, like if you feel compassion for anything, for, for an animal, for a flower, for a, an individual, for yourself, um, yeah. it just makes you feel like an improved sense of self-worth, you yeah. know? And, um, it also, when you feel compassion, especially when it's directed out at another person, another human being, yeah. um, it diverts your attention away from, you know, the problems that you're dealing with. And, yeah. you know, that's why it's like such a great thing. You know, it's like when you feel like down, when you feel depressed and you feel like you need something mm -hmm. just, um, you know, and, and when you're feeling that way, when you're feeling that, that neediness, that, that depression, that low, you know, you're in a low vibration. Yeah. Um, and you know, so the, the, one of the quickest and easiest ways to get yourself off of that low vibration and get yourself out of that stuck negative is to actually project your, um, you know, your positivity and your, um, your compassion toward some other, uh, problem that might be going on in the world. I mean, you know, when you really, you know, you think about all the other horrible things that are going on with other people, um, and you, but you, you send those people, your love, your compassion, your peace, you know, you're raising your vibration, um, you know, because you are, you know, you're, you're thinking in ways that aren't about your problems anymore. You know, you're thinking, yeah. in, you know, helping and, and it just mm -hmm. feels good to help. It does. It does. And, you know, um, I just want to give a plug for this organization and we're not getting any kind of out of money out of them. As far as I know, maybe they will now. Um, there's a, um, it's called, um, what's it called? Kiva, kiva.org. Uh -huh. And this is a thing where you actually, um, instead of just donating money to, to people like, uh, like save the children, which I love to save the children organization, you're actually, um, you're helping them by, by giving them a loan, a micro loan, it's micro loans. Uh -huh. And it's so cool because you can scroll through and you can see, you know, like somebody in the Philippines, for instance, they're trying to buy, um, you know, merchandise for their store. And so they need a $25 loan or something, or oh. everybody pitches in and they give them, you know, they're looking for $500. And so you pitch in and I got to tell you, Victoria, every time um, I get a repayment, uh, you know, it's like $6 or something like that. Right. Um, it makes me feel so good because I know that they had to be successful in their endeavor to have been able to pay that loan back. Yes. You know? Oh, I love it. So you make like little micro loans and then yeah. they, but they actually pay you back. They do. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. I, I really like it. And, but you know, doing things like that, you know, going and feeding the homeless or something or all those yes. things. I mean, you, I don't think you can even feel down if you're doing something like that, you know, helping an old lady across the street, you know, I mean, uh, just it raises is... your, what you feel. Yeah. Yeah, no, it it really, really does so much. Um, I I do remember this exercise we did, um, and you know we had to just kind of come up with a way to. Oh, it was just like it was called perform a miracle, you know. And so we didn't know exactly what that you know what is a miracle, hmm. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. um, well maybe it's not a miracle for you yourself to perform that miracle, mm -hmm. but if you think about it, like these people, you know, are starving and, you know, right. so we went and, you know, we made all these sandwiches and we went into like a homeless community and we just opened up the back of, you know, my uh, car and with yeah. all these sandwiches oh. and, 
you know, and, and sodas and chips and things like that, and just let them come and enjoy, uh, you know, a meal. And, you know, and it just like, oh my God, it was like one of the best, most memorable yeah. days of my life. It just felt so good just to do that. And, you know, just doing something like that is an expression of compassion and it just makes you feel happy, but, you know, you g- giving happiness to other people, um, for even a moment, you know, you might not be able to fix their problems forever, but right you know, just a moment of, uh, of, you know, expressing that compassion. It just, you know, it's just a positive experience. It just makes you feel good. It really does. And you, and it makes them feel good. So, I mean, it's a win-win situation. So, I mean, obviously we were, I mean, we've kind of scratched the surface here, but, but how does that compassion <laughs> feels good? How does that raise your vibration? Well, I mean, when you are <laughs> practicing compassion toward others, you know, you, in turn, you get to feel, you know, a a positive emotion, you know, it makes you feel happy. It makes you feel love. It makes you feel gratitude. And, you know, all of those feelings obviously are associated with raising your vibration. When you feel happy, love, gratitude, all of that is feeding a higher vibration. When you are focused um, on other people, you're diverting your attention away from your own problems and, you know, the problems that you're so stressed about that are giving you so much anxiety, you know, when you are feeling that stress and that anxiety again, you know, it's just like when you can turn your attention toward how can I help somebody else? Um, You know, it's just, it, it just causes you to shift, you know, the way that you're thinking, the way that you're feeling and, um, that compassion for, you know, for other people, it just, you know, it just, it just feels good. And, you know, it, it's also a message. It's sending a message to the universe. It's sending a message to your, your subconscious mind. Cause you know, so, so much, I think of why we ever feel a negative feeling we never really feel that way because we feel like I've got too much. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> too rich. I got too much pizza in the I'm fridge. Too rich, got... You know, <laughs> too many I'm nice too, cars to I drive. I have too much money. <laughs> I have too many great people in right. my life. You yeah, know, I have, exactly. I have so much abundance. I have so much love, <laughs> right? We never feel that way because we have too much. Right. Um, and so when you are practicing compassion, if you think about it, you know, you are coming from a place of, I have something to give. I have something to offer, even if it's just emotional support. You're saying, well, I have love to give. I yeah. have um, money to give. If you're giving money, I have energy to give, you know, people complain about how they don't have enough time. Well, if you don't feel like you have enough time, give more time, time. you know, like, you know, you've heard the expression. It's like, if you, um, want to get something done, ask a busy person because busy people. Oh yeah, totally. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Yeah. They know how to, you know, they know how to right. figure out how to optimize their time. So, you know, so much, uh, so much time, you know, it, it just kind of gets flittered away because we will take the amount of time that, um, that we have right. to do yeah. something, you know, like, yep. I mean, I, I can get ready in two hours or I can get ready in 15 minutes. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, it just depends on how much time you, are you going to give me? <laughs> yeah. And it, I will get it. I will be done on the nose, you know, in two hours, if I have two hours to get ready, like if my, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm going to get ready in 15 minutes and then have all this extra time to spare. No. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, um, give your time because you have it to give, Yeah. give your love because you have it to give, give your money, give whatever it is that you have, um, to give 
because you have it to give. And when you come from that place that you have to give and you're being compassionate, it's telling the subconscious mind, it's telling the universe, I'm abundant. I have, you know, things yeah. to give. And so feeling that abundance is also just another way to, you know, raise your vibration. Yeah. You know, I'm, uh, it's funny you say that about the, about the time, because uh, I did a success seminar over the weekend. And one of the participants was talking about how basically for like six more months has nothing to do, has not done anything for six months because they don't have anything to do. They don't have to do anything. And it's like that. I remember when I was, I got unemployed one time and I was like, oh my God, I can do this for like six months. It was, I got laid off from a job. I could write a book and I could do all these things. And I did nothing. I yeah. got nothing done because I had all the time in the world and you know, it's so frustrating. So if you have nothing to do, book yourself up, schedule some stuff so that Absolutely. you've got some stuff. Oh my God. It was like, um, during the pandemic, you know, a lot of people, oh, right. you know, felt that way. <clears throat> like, oh, I've got, just got all this time in the world. And like, for me, I was just kind of like, oh my God, I want to take advantage of this time. I want to, you know, get, uh, as many courses done as I, you know, I mean, I was already kind of, um, uh, living like there was a pandemic the pandemic, right? For, you don't leave the house for, much <laughs> for the last 18 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because I've been online all that time, but right. you know, I also just kind of felt like, um, you know, this, this was like, oh, like, I know, like a lot of people now are gonna, you know, be needing, um, my help to figure out sure. how to get online and how to structure their business that way. So, you know, I just, I, I really just kind of felt like, um, I never, ever for a moment felt the pause or felt like, you know, this is a time to like slow down or anything like that. It was just, <laughs> yeah the time to keep going and, you know, get, get more stuff done. Absolutely. So how can practicing the compassion help to overcome, help us to overcome our limiting beliefs and negative uh, thought patterns? Well, so if, if you really think about what a negative belief is and what a negative thought pattern is, it's just a belief that you, it's just a thought, you know, it's really just a thought that you just keep thinking over and over again. And it's just it's something that becomes a pattern. So when you shift your energy away from this negative thought pattern and you shift it into how can I help? How can I be of service? How can mm -hmm. I send my love and my compassion? You are no, you're breaking that pattern from I have nothing to, I have something and, you know, and, and it also helps you to just to feel better about yourself because if you're, I mean, how can you give and then feel bad about yourself? Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, you're, you're going to feel a feeling of like, you know, um, self-acceptance. You're going to feel more self-love, you know, you're going to feel more, uh, empathy, you, you know, you're, you're just, it just awakens you to this whole new set of feelings that you don't ordinarily, um, get to experience when you're just so caught up in your own drama and your own negative think thinking and your own complaints about, you know, how bad things are. It It's a shift in perspective. And that shift is always going to, you know, ultimately when you're shifting the way you're thinking, you're shifting your ultimate uh, limiting beliefs. Yeah. And, you know, I would like to, to kind of address the opposite side of this too, um, because it makes me think of, you know, I've worked with a lot of um, clients and, and this is what happens mostly with women, I think, uh, as far as my experience has been, and they don't want to ask for help. They don't want to be a burden. And of course, nobody wants somebody who is a burden that's asking for help all the time, right? I mean, that can get old. But I, like I tell them is like, if you're not asking for help, I mean, doesn't, and I always say, does, do you like helping people? Does it make you feel good? And they go, yeah. And I go, well, then you're depriving other people of having that same feeling. Ooh, yeah. And so um, it's really kind of a, a light bulb moment for a lot of them where they go, oh, wow, you know, and I think it's still, 
it can be a real challenge. Like I said, especially for a lot of women, you know, that especially when they're moms and grandmas and, and they're kind of, they have a lot of expectations put on them. And, uh, um, so I think, think about it from that angle too, folks, you know, if you're one of those people that's very independent, I can do everything myself, give people a chance to feel good too. You know? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that because, um, my husband and I, um, you know, had a conversation about this when we were going for a walk and he shared some, I won't, won't go into the details, but he just shared some, um, you know, some, some, um, anxieties and things like that, that he was experiencing, um, and, you know, at work and, um, you know, and, and so we talked about it and, you know, I was, I mean, by the end of our walk, you know, an hour later, he was feeling so much better and, um, you know, and, and I kept kind of checking up, you know, to see if he was kind of doing the, the mental things, you know, cause I gave him some mental things to, to check in, you know, with himself on and, um, and he's like done with this issue now. Right. Mm, and nice. it was just, and we didn't even really do any hypnosis. It was just really a coaching thing, but, you yeah. know, he told me at the end of this walk, you know, after we were all done, he's like, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, you know, put all this, you know, on you. It's like, no, it's like, this is how right. we this is, you know, first of all, like, this is what I do. And this right. is a privilege. And it's an honor to be able to, you know, to help with this stuff. And, um, you know, and, and this makes you seem more human to me that, you know, it's like, I mean, if you, you know, going to keep all this stuff to yourself and keep it all inside of you, and, you know, that's not doing anybody any, any good at all. And so anyway, it was just kind of a, little interesting moment because, um, you know, like men, some, a lot of times, you know, have a tendency to want to, um, you know, play the role, you know, of being, you know, tough and, and strong and they don't, um, they're not supposed to anyone. ask. Right. Yeah. They don't need anybody, <laughs> and you know, and, and all these things are a sign of weakness. It's like, no, it's actually, to me, it's a sign of strength when you're able to communicate um, something that you need help with. And like you said, it gives somebody, you know, me the opportunity to step in and, you know, and step into your shoes and, and feel the, and empathize and, and, um, see how I can help. And I got to think that that transference of compassion there, um, is going to create a deeper connection for you too. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And I, I mean, just, that was, you know, that was one of the things that it, it yeah. totally like gave me this, this new feeling of connection, you know, when I was able to, um, you know, uh, sh share, you know, sh share some things and just listen, you know, from this deeper place and, um, you know, and it just, yeah, it just made me, you know, feel more, more connected and. Yeah. So I, I got to think that that if we do that, I mean, how can that um, probably can help us make a deeper connection on a grander scale with the universe and the and of course the laws of attraction. Absolutely. That, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, practicing compassion, um, it just helps you to ultimately tap into this positive energy, um, from the universe. I think it's our human nature and our spiritual nature to want to, um, to help, you know, like, mm -hmm. I think as you know, human beings, we're just designed to, uh, to want to help. So when we're stepping into the role of practicing compassion, we're stepping into our godlike nature, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're being one with the universe. We're being in alignment. We're serving as God, you know? Yeah. And, you know, so I think, you know, I mean, God is compassionate, right? And so we're being more like God you know, uh, when we're, you know, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're being who we were meant to be. We're being all that we were meant to be. 
Um, and we're really aligned with this role that uh, the ultimate role that we're meant to play in this life. Yeah. You know, I, and it was, I was reminded of what you said earlier about, you know, um, creating a miracle and, you know, uh, there's like some kind of uh, some kind of proverb or something that, you know, God answers prayers, but he answers them through us, you mm -hmm. know? And so, I mean, there could have been very well could have been somebody praying, Oh God, please give me a meal today. And Victoria shows up with a, with a trunk full of sandwiches and it's like, <laughs> thank you. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. So we can be the, and what you said, too, I love that you um, like God's servants, you know, we're the ones that are, that can, we, we have the ability to, to make those, those prayers come true. Yeah. As, and it's thinking from a more mature, uh, more spiritual, more inclusive, um, more aligned place, just a higher, we're, you know, I think we're just stepping into our higher self. And of course, right. as we step into our higher self, you know, and we're not in our lower self and practicing things like jealousy and, um, fear and, uh, anger and, you know, all of those things, but we're stepping into our higher self. We're elevating our vibration because we're coming from a place of love. We're coming from a place of, um, you know, gratitude we're coming from a place of um you know servitude um if that's the word <laughs> um mm -hmm. you know we we're you know we're being all that we can be and of course that's elevating our vibration yeah and um so as we're thinking about our our you know manifestation practices and our spiritual practices can you tell us why it's important to prioritize compassion there well, it's, you know, ultimately it's the meaning of life, <laughs> you know, mm. um, it's, I mean, it's helping us to, um, you know, it's just really is helping us to overcome all those lower dimension, um, feelings, you know, our ego driven desires, you know, so, so many, um, so many times it's so easy to get caught up in like what we want and right. you know what we're trying what we're striving for and all of that and you know I'm guilty of that just like anybody else um but really um you know there's there's more to life than uh, our ego driven desires you know and our self-centeredness um you know our ultimate goal is, is oneness ultimately, you know, I mean, um, it, our ultimate goal is to real recognize ourselves as, as God and as one with, with the universe, one with all of us. And so yeah. compassion ultimately helps you to, uh, cultivate more of that, um, that energy, you know, that loving energy, that attractive abundance, uh, because, you know, you're, you're practicing, you know, it's, it's just kind of interesting because all the things that you want will, will ultimately come to you anyway. Um, probably even much faster when you take your ego out of the equation and you come from more of a place of, serving others through, you, you know, your compassion and, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just more, it just brings more meaning, more fulfillment, more purpose to your life. Um, you know, you realize that like, this is really why we're here. And um, then you attract all the things that you wanted anyway. Um, but you're just doing it from a place of like, not from lack or need, but from a place of, well, yeah, of course, these are my tools, um, mm -hmm. you know, for keeping myself where I need to be in order to be of service to others. Yeah. And, and I mean, like we're kind of talking about, it's very, it's a very selfish practice, right? You can, I mean, you can selfishly give to others because it makes you feel better. And also, you know, I kind of think about, 
you know, like I think about money in that, in that um, I used to get really bummed out about paying bills and stuff or, you know, a car breaks down or something. And I finally realized, Hey, that's a bad thing for me, but it's a great thing for the mechanic, right? It's a great thing for the tow truck driver. And so as we're putting this out there, we're giving to somebody else here was we're giving this homeless person sandwiches. There's some other energy force out there. Some person that's granting our dreams. That's granting our wishes as well. Oh, it's so true. Yeah. It's absolutely true. I mean, these app developers, you know, is hard of a time as I've had with, with them. Um, at the same time, you know, it's, it's like a two way, you know, they're granting, they're helping me to get to my dream, you know, right. and, um, I'm, but at the same time, I'm helping them ultimately get to their dream. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's, it, it is, um, even, you know, even when things don't look the way that you're hoping that they, they do right away, um, you know, you can look at the bigger picture, like you said, and you can see that like the higher way of, of, of viewing it is that this is helping somebody else. You know, my problems are somebody else's, um, opportunity and for more abundance. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so help us out and you'll feel better. So like the show, share it, all that stuff, and you'll feel better about yourself. And Exactly. Um... <laughs> Practice compassion today by uh, leaving us a wonderful comment exactly. and <laughs> you'll feel so much better in the process. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Share the episode too with somebody who you feel like could, you know, use a little more compassion and raising their vibration in their life. Yep. So what are some ways that we can practice compassion? Well, I believe that, um, you know, it, it, it really can start and it could start with just practicing yourself, uh, practicing yeah. on yourself you know, forgiving yourself for your mistakes and realizing your humanness. And, you know, so just starting to treat yourself with, um, you know, just more love and, and more tenderness and sweetness and being gentle with yourself and, you know, saying, Hey, <laughs> you're doing a good job. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's, uh, there's also, um, you know, practicing, uh, loving kindness meditation. Um, it's a, uh, it's in the Buddhist tradition It's called the meta, um, meta, and it's ultimately just, uh, you know, just feeling, uh, this, this, the self-compassion, but also the compassion, uh, for the whole world. I just like to say, I love that meditation. I was going through a really angry period and there were uh -huh. a lot of people I was angry at. And I started and I found that and I started doing it and it helped me so much people. Oh. It really made a huge difference. I love that, that su suggestion. I'd forgotten about it, but thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. It's, it's great. So practicing meta practicing um, and, and you can practice that in a meditation. Um, also another way that you can start to uh, practice compassion is really by actively listening you know so many times we're just listening just for an opportunity to answer and we're yeah. like we can't wait to answer <laughs> but most of the time when people are sharing something with you you know they are sharing something with you that maybe they want to be acknowledged on maybe they want some empathy on maybe um, you know, so when you can start to really tune in and, and listen from your heart and listen in a way that makes people feel heard and understood. And when I say active listening, like, you know, you can take that to reflective listening to where, um, so I understand or here's what I heard you say, and you can actually repeat back to them so that they really, really feel like you've heard them and you yeah. can take that a step further and empathize with them and say, you know, I, that happened to me, you know, I, I would feel awful or I would feel this way. I feel frustrated. I feel whatever it is, you know, you step into their shoes. Cause that part of compassion for me, you know, is also, it's just about 
being, uh, not solving necessarily their problems, but just being with them. And, you know, so that act of listening, I think is a really, really great, um, way that you could, you could practice. And then, um, random act of kindness is just a wonderful way to practice, um, compassion, just, you know, cheering somebody up out of the blue, sending somebody a text, sending somebody a nice letter, sending somebody, you know, reviewing somebody's podcast, even listening to for the, uh, sending them a nice positive review on their app. Um, no, you can, um, you know, send, send somebody flowers, a nice gift, uh, you know, walk somebody across the street. Uh, I mean, there's like a thousand different ways you could, you know, practice random acts of kindness. These are just things where you really expect nothing in return. You're just doing it out of the kindness of your heart. And it just opens up your heart and just makes you feel good. And another uh, way is, you know, and, and I, I, um, really want to get back to doing this is volunteering, um, you know, volunteering in your community. Um, and you know, I, I did it with the animals. I mean, I just, I, I just have so much compassion for Mm. animals. I mean, I, I have compassion for, for people too, but, um, that's, you know, uh, I, I volunteered when I lived in Florida for, uh, Peggy Adams, uh, animal, control, uh, rescue. And, um, and then I also, uh, volunteered a little bit here. Um, I put together a 5k community 5k for an animal rescue out here called fearless kitty rescue. And, um, Ooh, love that name. Yeah. It, isn't it a great name? I just love it. It was a, per- and we had, so we had the fearless kitty 5k, um, a few uh, years back. Yeah, it was great. We all dressed up in cat costumes and, <laughs> You know, and so of course, all the proceeds from uh, the run, uh, you know, went to that rescue, and you know, so just volunteering. I mean, it's like ha- you can't feel bad while you're volunteering. You know, um, you know, unless you come into the shelter that morning and the um, all the, you know, uh, all the the cages are just filled with poop. Uh- <laughs> 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 no, but even then, you know, it's like you see their cute little faces, these yeah. cute little kittens, and you know, it's just like, okay, it's messy in here and stinky, but <laughs> right, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, gratitude, of course, is just another way to help yourself to feel more compassion because when you, you know, you feel grateful for, you know, your life, um, it just again, it kind of takes the you know, takes you off of your problems and, and just makes more space for you to have, um, an open heart to facilitate that, you know, feeling of compassion for other people. And, and finally just forgiveness, um, forgive, you know, like if you like literally have someone in your life that, um, has done you wrong that maybe hasn't said great things to you or has just done horrible things to you. You know, um, I think one of the highest ways to answer that situation is through forgiveness and then through forgiveness. And one of the ways that you can practice forgiveness is literally having compassion for where that person, what that person is so hurt Mm -hmm. in there, you know, so, uh, broken, so, um, in such a low place in their life to do something that, you know, terrible to you. Um, you know, that's just a whole new way of, dealing with people who, um, you know, maybe wronged you, maybe did something, you know, wrong is to like literally forgive them and come from a place of peace and compassion and send them love. You know, it's interesting. And I don't remember, so you were talking about the meta and I don't remember if it actually asked 
in the in the meditation to imagine them as a little child. But somehow, but I remember my mind went there. And I remember there was there was this one guy that I was that I was kind of arguing with online about some stuff. And I just imagined him as a little boy, you know, seven, eight years old. And how, how could you not feel forgiveness for for them at that age, this little child? Yeah. And, um, it helped a lot. The other thing too is, you know what I realized one time about, you know, forgiving myself for stuff in the past, you know, you're not even that same person anymore, physically, mentally, or emotionally. You know, so you true. did something when you were, when you were 25. I mean, they already say that, you know, your, your skin, all the cells and everything, it changes like every seven years or something. Um, you're not that same person. So, but it's like you're in prison for life for the crimes of somebody else almost. You know what I mean? It's so true. Yeah. I mean, we change all the time. And so you're right. I mean, we're not that same person who, who did those things and, um, and, you know, so it, it, it's, it can be hard, you know, so you have to forgive that person, you know, and you have to yeah. have compassion for the person that you were, but that's not who you are now. And most yeah. likely you've learned something from that. And, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, a little bit out there, but I think all of the experiences that we have, whether they're you know, bad experiences, um, wrong, ex you know, seemingly wrong experiences. It's all just, you know, in God's eyes, it's all just, uh, you know, an experience. It's just, it's just, it's just an experience. It's just part of being human. It's part of learning. It's part of our growth. It's part of what we came here uh, to just experience and, um, you know, and it, it's, it's a little bit, you know, hard sometimes to, you know, um, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to accept that, but the more we can just sort of like, um, maybe, you know, dissociate a little bit from this physical, uh, body that we're so attached to, um, yeah. and kind of realize ourselves more as like the spiritual, uh, you know, energy that's, that's taken this form of this physical body and just kind of realize that all of this stuff is just ultimately, it's just, it's just temporary and it's just here. It's just, it's just, um, it's not the bigger picture. Um, it's just really just a speck. Um, and most of the things, you know, you remember that book, um, you know, uh, something about the small stuff and it's, don't worry about the small stuff and don't it's all, don't sweat the small don't stuff, sweat the small 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 stuff. stuff. Yeah. and it's all small stuff. And it's true. I mean, most of the stuff he, he talks about the beginning of that book that, um, you know, most of the stuff that we are super concerned about right now, um, and this doesn't go for necessarily everything. I'm saying most things, most of the right. things that we're thinking about right now are, are not going to be a big deal a year from now. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and certainly not on your, certainly not on your deathbed. Probably, right. Most likely. Exactly. So, yeah. Good point. And, you know, yeah. so um, we, you know, if we could just sort of practice rising above that and, um, having compassion for ourselves um, and and to recognize too, and this comes from another one of my favorite books, uh, Total Self-Confidence uh, by Dr. Robert Anthony. And that is that, you know, we're always, you're always doing your best with your present level of awareness. Exactly. Love that. Yeah. You know, it's so true. Yeah. yeah. And, um, always no one. And so is, and so is and, everyone else. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. you know, and that's another, it's an NLP pre presupposition as well. You know, yeah. like no one's setting out to do their worst. No one's setting out to, um, not be, you know, the best that they can, you know, and your present level of awareness is going to change moment by mm -hmm. moment and mm -hmm. day by day. And mm -hmm. it's going to be impacted by, all kinds of things, you know, if, if you just 
somebody died or if you didn't get enough sleep or if you haven't been taking that good a care of yourself, you know, we're always doing our best. So we need to have compassion for who we were and also, you know, who we are now. And, and you, you may even be in this moment saying to yourself, like, I I know I'm not at my best right now. <laughs> you got to have compassion for that person that you are even right now, because you know what, you may not be at your best, but you're acting from the place of maybe you're not at your best, but you're, you're doing your best with, you know, even though you're not at your best right now. Yep. Absolutely. Love it. So um, thank you so much for sharing all this information for us. And I hope that people have some really incredible breakthroughs. Yeah, I do too. And um, yeah, this was a, n- another powerful, um, you know, th- these uh, we've been going through, if you are curious, um, you know, we've been going through some of the qualities from my book, uh, Practical Law of Attraction. And uh, so this is quality number four out of 16 uh, qualities mm. that Great. help a person with manifesting and help you to raise your vibration. So if you're interested and you're curious uh, to know more about, um, you know, practical law of attraction, you can get that book on Amazon practical law of attraction and, uh, and learn about the other 16 qualities. And I give, I actually have uh, 16 meditations um, that are free for you to, um, to, uh, to download when you get that book. Um, so you'll get the book and you'll find out where to get all those uh, meditations, worksheets and everything. So thank you guys so much for, uh, tuning in today to the power of your mind podcast. I uh, hope you found today's episode informative and inspiring, and please do share this podcast with your friends, with your family. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review and tune in next week for another inspiring episode. And until then, keep using the power of your mind to reach your goals and live your best life of abundance and joy. Bye now.